I am Jasin. I am from IIT Palakkad. Okay. So uh, I'll try to continue from what you know. But in case uh, there are some missing link links, you let me know that uh, you don't know this and ask me to explain. Okay. So if you don't get something, then stop me and ask. Okay, so uh, the topic which I am going to cover over the next few lectures is approximation algorithms. Uh, you have some background for it, but not everything requ required. So uh, I'll prompt you and you have to respond and tell me what you know and what you don't know. Okay. Uh, so our ideal world is where for every problem we have very efficient algorithms. Say efficiency, when we talk about efficiency in computer science uh, perspective, what does that mean? What are efficient algorithms? Uh, ideal situation is that the problem has a polynomial time solution, right? Asymptotically, it has a polynomial time solution. But then this is only an ideal situation. Uh, for several, say you know some problems for which such solutions exist. Can you name some of the problems for which you know polynomial time algorithms? Sorting, searching, uh, finding um, minimum distance between two points in a graph, right? All these things have polynomial time algorithms. But if you know the breadth of the problems, then you will easily understand that in fact, the set of problems for which such efficient solutions are known is very, very small compared to the actual uh, problems that comes when some application is required or something. It is often not polynomial time. The constraints are making them very hard to solve. So most of the problems are not known to be polynomial time solvable. Then came this. Uh, theory of NP completeness, NP hardness and all, which says that uh, you have seen that certain problems are NP hard, right? NP complete. Uh, give one example. Click. You have already seen that click is NP complete. So what does that mean? If? Yes. So if we can solve click problem in polynomial time, that will mean that all problems in NP can be solved in polynomial time, which we believe that it is, though there is no proof that it cannot be done, people have been trying for a very long time and that is in fact one problem that has been stated as the problem of the previous century actually and it never got solved. So we believe that actually p is not equal to np and there are that is not the case that is it is unlikely that click problem will have a um, polynomial time solution okay so there are such problems uh, but it is not okay uh, for us to say that these problems for which there are no polynomial time solutions uh, which are likely still we cannot say that uh, we don't solve them at all, right? So what do we try? We will try for approximate solutions. Anyway, uh, exact solutions in polynomial time are not expected because we believe P not equal to NP, right? But we have to somehow address these things. So we will try to approximately solve. But then the question is, can all problems be solved approximately. Approximately, then we should say how approximate, right? How to measure how good is the approximation, right? All these questions will arise. So we'll try to address these one by one. So uh, I'll, the agenda is we will see how uh, we can quantify uh, how good is the approximation, okay? Uh, and then I will also, maybe I will first introduce this example of vertex cover and then after that we will see these terms as how to quantify the goodness of a 
approximation algorithm, how good it performs. Okay. Uh, so, shall we first then do, since you have not done that uh, vertex cover problem is NP complete, can we complete that proof first? Show that this is an exercise problem for you. So, you do it now. We need to show that vertex cover problem, the decision version. What is, what is the problem? What are the inputs to this problem? Graph G hmm? and a positive integer, right? There are two parameters G and K. Given G and K our problem is to see So this is the question, right? Given a graph G and a positive integer K, we want to see if G has a vertex cover of size at most K, right? So can you show that this problem is NP complete? How? Is it in NP? You have already shown that it is in NP, right? So let's call in short form it as VC, okay? So we know that VC is in NP. Right? You have already seen the proof, right? For that, what should we so, uh, show? That it has a polynomial time verifier, right? Now, the second thing that you need to show is, what, what should you show? This is NP hard. So, how do you show that this is NP hard? Okay. We should show that uh, there, there is some, it takes some NP hard problem, which is most, most natural. We know that it is NP hard. And then show a, polynomial time reduction from that problem to this problem, right? So, which is the problem that you want to choose? 3 sat you can choose, but uh, there is an easier one. You already know that click is NP hard, right? So, can you now show that uh, <coughs> click from click there is a reduction to, you already know that. So, click is NP hard, right? This this is also known to you. Now, how do we conclude that vertex cover is NP NP hard? Reduce click to. Uh, are you sure about the direction? Yes, right. Okay. To know, show that our problem is NP hard, we should take a hard problem and reduce to our problem, right? So, click is polynomial time many to one reducible to vertex cover. This reduction you have seen, right? Already seen, right? Or you have not seen? If you have not seen, tell me. You have seen it. So, what does, what does that mean? What does that mean? What can we conclude from these two steps? Clip is NP hard. Click is polynomial time reducible to vertex cover. So, what is the conclusion from these 2 and 3? 2 and 3 will say that vertex cover is NP hard and 1 says that vertex cover is in NP. So, together it says vertex cover is NP complete, correct. So, 2 and 3 imply that VC is NP hard and uh, then you can say by 4 and 1 VC is NP complete, right? So, what does that mean? If 
p is not equal to np which we believe is the case vertex cover decision problem does not have a polynomial time algorithm for solving it right deterministically so so this means that can you read it from there no uh, can you see properly otherwise i mean your eyesight is okay <laughs> okay <laughs> otherwise you come and sit here <laughs> okay i'll write a bit bigger this means that is this okay uh vertex cover does not have a poly time solution unless p is equal to np after some time i may stop saying that unless p is equal to np because that is what we believe okay what you always think that that assumption is there right vertex cover problem has no polynomial time solution unless p is equal to np correct so now let's see so there is no hope of getting deterministic polynomial time and can we get a approximate solution now that is the next step right let's try to get and then we will formulate the related uh, performance guarantees okay so uh, if you have a problem which is np complete like this okay so now comes a question so uh, we are not always interested only in decision problems right say so we are often interested in optimization problems right you want to find a shortest path from s to t right or you want to find a minimum vertex cover in the given graph you want to find a vertex cover of size at most k in the graph the question is not always just does there exist yes or no question right so for this approximation algorithms part i am shifting the focus from decision problems to the corresponding optimization problem okay so uh, we are uh, now considering np complete most of the problems that we are coming to see in the uh, coming lectures they are np complete optimization problems okay so the problem is now not this decision problem okay so i am not going to formally define what is an np complete optimization problem so that will take a lot of time so i am not going to do that but intuitively you just think that uh, if the corresponding decision version of the problem is np complete then we will say that this problem the optimization version is also np complete okay think like that okay technically it is not very precise but that is okay for our purposes okay so my problem now if i want to uh, now see vertex cover problem right so vertex cover optimization problem is this okay so the question is given a graph g now it does not have two inputs it has only one input the input is a graph given a graph g find a vertex cover in this graph which has got minimum, minimum or maximum minimum maximum does not make sense because if you take all vertices you get a vertex cover right all edges will be covered so it does not make sense so the question is a minimization problem it has only one input so given a graph g find a vertex cover of g of minimum cardinality right 
right? This is the optimization problem. So how do we approach this problem? We cannot solve it. So we, we will try to approximate it. How? So we have to see if there are any related problems which are polynomial time solvable. And with the solution to the related problem, can we get a solution to our problem? OK? Fine? So since we don't know how to approach it directly, we will try to find a related problem okay, such that we know how to solve that problem exactly in polynomial time, the related problem. And then we will somehow manipulate the solution of the related problem so that we can not get the exact solution for our problem, but we will get a reasonably good approximate solution for our problem. So that is the approach. So identify, so this is the uh, one method of finding an approximate solution. Identify a related, related, I mean close by uh, problem that is solvable in polynomial time. Solve the related problem then from the solution to the related problem this is a exact solution okay obtain a approximate solution to our problem. So this is the general strategy. Fine? That is fine. Any questions? Idea is clear, right? So from there are two things which should we should make sure that they are in polynomial time. One is that the related problem can be solved in polynomial time. And then there is one more step which should be in polynomial time. So what is that step? Which among these steps? So this thing can be done in polynomial time, right? We should make sure of that. Then what else should we uh, make sure that we can do in polynomial time to get an approximate solution to our problem. Hmm? Identification is a mental uh, step that does not need a computer, right? You need to do it yourself manually, identifying. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So, from a solution to the related problem, how do we convert that? to obtain a solution to our problem. That step also should be doable in polynomial time. Then only all these things are pos possible in polynomial time, right? So this also should be in polynomial time. OK? This is the general setup. So let us so try to identify a related problem uh, which is polynomial time solvable for vertex solving vertex cover. Okay. So So what is the size of a minimum vertex cover of this graph? 1, right? Okay. Uh, now let me draw another extreme case. I will draw a click, click on n vertices. Okay. 
what is a click complete graph right so this is the click on four vertices right so suppose there are n vertices for a click on n vertices what is its vertex cover number right if you don't choose any two vertices then the edge between them cannot be covered who is going to cover the edge between them so you can leave only one vertex right and that is okay also all edges are covered even if you leave out one vertex so this is called a star graph and this is a k4 in general a kn has vertex cover equal to n minus 1 right okay now you can try take some paths some trees all these things you can take and see okay so uh, looking at these things does it give you any clue as do you know what problems do you know which are likely to be related to vertex cover problem i don't know how much you know but do you know any problems that are likely to have any relation with see click don't say uh, np other np complete problems that are not like going to help us we need a problem which is polynomial time solvable and maybe it has some relation to this problem so uh, bfs dfs and all you are thinking so maybe we will see one such thing later okay so maybe i'll just tell you okay huh. first problem itself is finding the polynomial like for a tree for a tree right yeah, it's polynomial time solvable correct and do you know how to yeah like we know that if a vertex cover the leaf edges will okay be. so uh, maybe we'll do that later okay we'll do that a bit later uh, you all have the problem sheet with you okay then we can maybe even try now how do we find the vertex cover of a tree in a in polynomial time can you try it is easy to find a vertex cover minimum vertex cover <coughs> of a tree minimum vertex cover of a tree in polynomial tree what is a tree connected acyclic graph right how do we do that for some graph classes so it is easy to do vertex cover problem in polynomial time though in general it is np complete okay that does not mean for every graph it is np complete there are some classes for which it is still np trace is one such case so can you find one try and tell me one method in which given a tree we can identify a minimum vertex cover of the tree in polynomial time exactly not approximation or anything so for this is a tree right this graph itself is a tree so why did i choose this vertex because if i select any vertex of degree 1 then it will cover only that edge right but that edge can be covered also with the other end point of this edge right if i take this leaf vertex if i take this vertex then i can cover only this edge right then for covering other edges i'll be forced to take more edges that is one thing another thing is anyway whatever this edge is going to cover i don't need to pick this this vertex exactly i can pick the other end point that end point is definitely going to cover this edge maybe it will cover something more right so it is certainly beneficial to just neglect this degree 1 vertex and take its other end point right the edges other end point it is always safe we are not losing anything because this whatever this edge vertex was covering the other end point will also cover right so it's safe to discard all degree 1 vertices right 
So let me not take any of these degree 1 vertices, instead take this, that was my intuition. So can you apply the same logic in a tree? But we should not take all the remaining vertices, what should you do? Just try. You need not take leaves, right, because they are degree 1, they are parents, if you think of it as a rooted tree, their parents are enough. So you are forced to take parents, since you are not going to take any of the leaves, you are forced to take their parents. Now what should you do? Hmm? Okay. So suppose I have a uh, tree. So what should I do? I can delete all, I mean discard all these things, I am not going to take these because their other endpoints are sufficient, so I am forced to take them also, right? I cannot discard both, so I am forced to take these vertices. This also not taken because it is a leaf, so I am forced to take these vertices. Now what should I do? Now I can mark all the edges adjacent to these vertices as taken, right? Another way to say the same thing is delete these vertices from the graph, right? Because their adjacent edges are anyway covered, right? So this edge is covered, this is also covered anyway, right? These are all covered edges. So we do not need to cover them again. So we can as well assume that we will now not, not consider these, this or the remaining vertices. We will just solve the problem after deleting these leaves and their parents. Right? These things we can delete <coughs> along with the adjacent edges and now you can solve the problem in the resultant graph which is a smaller tree, right? So you know how to solve it, right? Using induction you can solve, right? If you are given a tree of only one, two levels or one level, you know how to solve vertex cover problem, right? It's just one vertex, you do not need to take anything. Okay. If it is at least one edge, then you need to take only the root vertex. So that is the start of the induction, right? And then if you have a bigger tree, then you know how to make it smaller. You have to certainly include these parents of the leaves, right? You have to certainly discard, I mean certainly I am not saying, but there is one solution in which leaves are, none of the leaves are there, just avoid them, take the remaining things, right? And then take them into your solution and recursively find a solution for the remaining tree and then take the union, okay? Is it clear or am I going too fast? Is it clear to you how we got the solution? Fine? If you did not then ask. Fine? Okay. So we want to find a minimum vertex cover for the entire tree. So if the tree is very small, like one or two vertices, you know how to solve it, right? If it is not like that, then you know that we do not need to consider any of the leaf nodes because you can as well ignore them and take their parents, right? So what you will do is ignore, decide to ignore all the leaves and decide to include all their parents. Okay, now you have a certain set of edges which are covered, which are the edges that are covered, leaf anyway they are, their adjacent edges are covered and every edge that is adjacent to these nodes which you have anyway selected in your solution, that is also covered, right? So you can decide to now delete all those which you have discarded and all those you have included in your solution. All these are now deleted from the tree. Now you get a smaller tree find a minimum vertex cover of the smaller tree, right? Because in a bigger solution of the, of the bigger tree, certainly you, you should have a solution to this smaller one also that you need to show, but you can show that, okay? Solution to the original problem, you should have a minimum for this smaller tree also. Otherwise, you can get a better solution to the bigger one, okay? So you solve the smaller tree optimally, then just add those things which you have anyway chosen to add to the solution. Then you get a solution. Okay? Fine? Okay.
now try to complete the steps. So, this is the way in which we can solve it for a tree in polynomial time. But, uh, okay. But we are now dealing with general graphs, not trees, right? Clicks and all those things are there. So, we cannot start by saying we have, if we have a degree 1 vertex, then we can do some elimination like this, but we do not have a starting point even, right? So, is there a related problem which we can solve in polynomial time? See, if you are looking at a tree, okay, then one thing that you can notice is, see, when I took this edge, right, vert uh, vertex, I, you can see that it has an associated edge like this, right? Then this also, it has multiple edges, but I can choose at least one edge like this. Here also I can choose one edge like this, right? Then later I deleted all these, but then later I am going to, this is also related to this, right? This one is the resultant tree after deleting all these things. Now this becomes the leaf this becomes the root, which I will solve like this. So, it is also covering some specific edge, right? At least this edge it is covering, you know that. So, you will see that this vertex cover is covering certain set of independent edges. What do I mean by independent edges? So, some people know what it is. It is called a matching, okay? I will define it. Okay, so, you, you can see that these edges have no endpoints in common. Such a collection of edges is called a matching. So, A matching in a graph G is a subset of edges, subset of E, such that no two edges in E uh, subset, let me say, E dash of E such that no two edges in E dash have a common endpoint, common vertex. Okay. Such a collection of edges is called a matching. They are independent, independent edges. Okay. So uh, can you see a relation between the size of a, okay, now let me say a maximum matching in a graph is the, a set of edges such that it is a matching and there is no other matching in this graph with bigger cardinality. So, that is a maximum matching, okay. So, a maximum matching is a matching, matching with maximum cardinality, maximum possible cardinality. Say, let me write it as mm. Okay. So, can you see a relationship between, at least in trees, do you see a relationship between these two things, maximum matching size and minimum vertex cover size in a tree? Do you see any relationship? Okay. 
both are the same? Is it always the case? We saw that in this example. Hmm? Actually, our con uh, I mean our uh, method for the previous thing, the recursive solution can be extended to an inductive proof if you want to, right? Okay, this is an exercise for you, okay? We may take it up later. Show that in a tree, the size of a maximum matching is equal to the size of its minimum vertex cover in any tree. Okay, so the idea I will tell you now itself, the same way which I, I almost told you the proof also. I, I did not do it completely formally, but you can see that every time we took, discarded a vertex, it was matched with its, I mean, I cannot say that. Whenever I took a vertex, it was covering an edge that was not covered and we deleted anyway all the adjacent edges, right? Then. Anyway, whatever we are taking was giving us a matching only in this way, in every step, right? So we are getting a matching. Now we only need to say that the size of this matching was equal to the minimum vertex cover. That also, if you systematically do, you can complete an inductive proof, okay? From the same thing. I, am, I have illustrated it here. This thing you can formalize into a proof if you want, okay? Fine? So... And one nice thing about this maximum matching problem is that it has a polynomial time solution on any graph. Okay, so vertex cover problem is an NP complete problem. But maximum matching problem, for trees at least we are seeing some relation that they are the same. That will not be the case in general. Otherwise, if maximum matching is polynomial time solvable, then Vertex cover is also polynomial time solvable and NP equal to P and, okay, <laughs> okay, so that is not the case. So, uh, vertex cover and maximum matching are not of the same size for every graph. You have one question. Can you give me one graph for which these two parameters are not the same? Vertex cover number and maximum matching size, they are not the same. C3, C3 vertex cover, vertex cover number is 2, matching is 1, okay. C3, this is a vertex cover, uh, uh, this is a vertex cover, vertex cover number is 2, maximum matching is just one edge you can take, right? One. Any any higher, bigger examples? Odd cycles. Uh, what do you get? There is a difference of one is okay, but can we get slightly larger? So the question says there can be a gap of a two factor between these two. If the vertex cover number is k, there are some graphs for which vertex no cover number is k and max, I mean, um, yeah, maximum matching size is k and vertex cover number is 2k. That bigger gap is there. Can you f give me some examples? Bigger example. This is one example, but this example is very small. I cannot say that in general with this graph. Complete graph, say, on four vertices, what do you get? Vertex cover is 3. Vertex cover is 3. 
So it is not double. So what some small variation. So any odd click, right? You take any odd click. N is n is an odd number. So what do you get? K n n odd, right? So this graph, what is the vertex cover number? Vertex cover number is anyway n minus 1, right? We have seen it. What is the maximum matching size in this graph? What is maximum matching size in a uh, click of n vertices where n is odd? Uh, n by 2 is not a floor. So it is n minus 1 by 2, right? So maximum matching is okay. N minus one size is n minus one by two. Sorry, n minus one by two. So you see that there is a gap of factor two between these two, right? Uh, now try to see if there are any. Can you construct any graphs for which this graph is more than this? this gap is more than 2, factor 2. That is vertex, my maximum matching size is k, but minimum vertex cover size is more than 2k. Can you construct any graphs like that? Okay. Are there any graphs? with maximum matching equal to k and vertex cover number is greater than strictly greater than 2k. Are there any graphs like this? Complete I mean that is not a proper argument. What if it is not a complete graph it was something else? Right. We would need less number of vertices for the vertex cover also, right? That is the problem. Vertex cover number also will go low, not only the matching, right? So, can we have a graph in which the difference between these two is more than factor 2? Try out, try out. And uh, if you are not able to find, then tell me an intuitive reason as why you are not able to find. We need to have reasons, not just examples, right? <coughs> Looks like not possible? Or you have a reason why it is not? Why? Form a vertex cover by considering endpoints of all matching edges. Hmm. So that will form a vertex cover. Uh, why should it? Okay, let's let's try to make his argument formal. Okay, uh, but uh, so the answer to this is no. Okay, the answer is no. There are no such graphs. For every graph, maximum matching is, if you take twice maximum matching, that will give you an upper bound for vertex cover number. Okay. Vertex cover number is the size of the minimum cardinality vertex cover. Okay. So now, I, uh, what he suggested is that, Construct a maximum matching in the graph and take both endpoints of. So, in the tree, I had taken only one endpoint of that, 
but instead of that take both endpoints of all the matched edges and he claims that this is a vertex cover so obviously its size is twice maximum matching right okay so that is his idea uh, so the claim is that in any graph the size of or maximum matching or vertex cover is less than or equal to two times maximum matching okay so this is the claim so what he tells is that is also in fact a okay i had written some four steps here right from a solution to maximum matching he is telling me actually a easy polynomial time method to get a vertex cover i have not told you how this is maximum matching is in polynomial time okay i don't know about this one but i certainly know that if i have a maximum matching he is telling me a method this is polynomial time right suppose you have a maximum matching he is just telling you take both endpoints it is clearly polynomial time right so the step 4 he is telling in polynomial time okay we need to prove that it's a vertex cover let's try to show that okay so proof let m be a maximum matching okay let s be the set of n points or both n points of all edges in this matching a maximum matching m okay claim is that uh s is a vertex cover of g why should it be a vertex cover can there be an edge which is not covered by s s is not a suppose s is not a vertex cover then there should be another edge which is not covered by s that is why s is not a vertex cover right now what is the contradiction m is not a vertex cover ha so if s is not a vertex cover there exists an edge say e such that no end point of s uh, e is in s right so now why can't we include this edge e also into the matching to get a bigger matching m dash right <coughs> will it still be a matching now consider this thing m dash is equal to this m with this uncovered edge g also added okay so is this a matching m was a matching even if we add one new edge to that set is it going to be a matching why is it a matching why is m dash a matching so it it its end points are not in s so it does not share any end point with any other edge in m in m m is a matching so none of the end points of two edges in m are common right now you are saying okay anyway this edge has no end points in m uh, any s that is it does not have any conflict with any other edges in the in m so you can easily add this 
and it is still a matching okay if a matching of bigger size so what is the problem now so this means that m was not a maximum matching so there is a contradiction which means this thing that I assumed initially that S is not a vertex cover is not true. S is a vertex cover, right? S is a vertex cover. <coughs> so, this is a contradiction. Sometimes we we'll write it this way. It is a contradiction, okay? So, what we achieved is that we have proved the claim not only the claim from the proof it also follows that if we take both endpoints of a maximum matching then we get a vertex cover it may not be minimum because in tree if we take both endpoints it will be double right vertex cover number was equal to maximum matching so if we take both endpoints we are going to be off by a two factor right it's okay but that is a good bound so, what we showed is in any graph, if M is a maximum matching, then the set of endpoints of all edges of M gives a vertex cover of G of size less than or equal to 2 times vertex cover of G. Okay? So, that is what we have shown. Correct? Any problem? Uh, sorry, 2 is not required. Ah, this is, what is the problem? So, this is equal to, this is 2m, right? This is less than or equal to 2 times. Okay, okay. One second. So, what we showed is uh, this is size is 2m and it is a vertex cover, right? So, we showed that say if uh, that will not, it is a vertex cover, right? Okay. Its size is 2m, it is a vertex cover, that is enough for us. Okay. Uh, and can we, okay, now I actually want to make this property a bit stronger. I do not actually want to take a maximum matching. Actually maximum matching in any graph can be solved in polynomial time. But do you know a algorithm for that polynomial time algorithm? How many of you know a polynomial time algorithm for finding maximum matching in any graph? Have you studied this ever? Hmm? Blossom algorithm. There is an algorithm. Edmunds Blossom algorithm is there, which can be used to find a maximum matching in any graph in polynomial time. Okay. If you are interested, you read it. But I don't. I cannot teach that very fast. So what I will say is, this property. I don't need a maximum matching here, but I have a stronger property. Okay. That is. In any graph, G, if M is a maximal matching, I will ex explain what it is. M is a maximal matching, then 
the set of endpoints of edges of M is a vertex cover of G of size 2 times M. Okay. So, what is the maximal matching now? So, it is also common in graph theory and all to say that certain things are maximal. So, what do you think it is? A maximal matching need not be a maximum matching. Okay. So, take this example of a <coughs> okay, take this graph. What is the size of maximum matching in this graph? It is two, right? You can find two edges which are independent. You cannot find more than two edges which are independent. So, two is the size of maximum matching, right? So, say these two edges you can take for example. But, suppose you chose this edge to include in your matching. Is there any other edge that you can add? No, because every other edge is adjacent to this edge, right? At least one of the endpoints of this edge, right? So, this is a matching. This is also a single edge is also a matching, right? This is a matching in this graph which cannot be made any bigger. Why cannot it be made any bigger? But because every other edge has is adjacent to at least one uh, vertex end point of this collection, right? Such a matching, it need not be always one edge, can be a bigger graph and it can be more, okay? So, a matching which cannot be made any bigger is called a maximal matching. It need not be always maximum as you can see in this example, right? A maximal matching in G is a matching M in G such that if you add any edge of G not in M uh, or I should say in such that for every edge E which is in E of G but not in M. If you try to add any other edge, this new thing is not a matching. So, this is the definition of a maximal matching. So, my claim is that this property is not only true for maximum matchings, but even if I say the matching is maximal, I can still say that if you take both endpoints of M, still you get a vertex, vertex cover. Uh, can you do the same proof as we did before? Right, same thing, right? You take both endpoints of all vertices in a maximal matching now. Okay. If it is not a vertex cover, you have some edge outside. If you add that vertex, that edge to this set, now the contradiction is not to the cardinality. Maximum what is the, the of the maximal, maximal, that definition is contradicted because even if you add that edge which is not covered, you can expand this existing matching, right? So, the original was not a maximal matching, 
Now, earlier we told it is not a maximum matching. Even if it was a maximal matching, the same thing will work, right? So, the same proof will go through. Only thing is we are contradicting the definition of maximal matching there, right? Not definition, the fact that we started with the maximal matching, right? So, this is also easy. Now, the good thing is not only him, but all of you can give me a polynomial time algorithm to find a maximal matching in G, any graph. You do not need to be very clever to get a polynomial time algorithm to find a maximal matching in a given graph. So, tell me what it is. Do not find vertex cover. I am asking vertex cover we cannot find, it is very hard. I am trying to find vertex cover with the help of maximum matching. Okay. I, so, I am telling you maximum matching he only knows how to find. Blossom algorithm something he told right. But I do not know that or you do not know that right. So, let us so now simplify the problem do not try to find maximum matching, but try a maximal matching a easy method is there to find a maximal matching all of you can find. So, find it. How do we find a maximal matching in a given graph? The obvious way will work. Tell me what it is. Okay, greedy. What is the greedy? Take any more. Let some more people identify. How do we do that? For the graph, we will mark the edges e1 into e3. For the graph, we will mark the level of edges e1 into e3 e1. Now we take the first edge e1. Now for this every second edge, we will check the end, any common endpoint or not. With? With e1. Hmm. If, if not, we will add that or else we will proceed. And it's just a grid so you got it? Choose any arbitrary edge and take, go on taking independent edges with it or non adjacent edges with it. You cannot, then they may be mutually dependent, no? If you, uh, you have to be more formal. Okay. You cannot take every other edge which is independent to the initial edge. And they should be? <laughs> mutually, no? So give a proper, I mean, make it more formal. So, got it? Hmm? This is obvious. Find it. We took the remove the all the edge incident to the end vertices of that edge that we have selected. Hmm. And similar way we with the remaining graph we take yes. another edge. And then with the width and the width, we means that will be the maximum. Maximal, right? Yeah. Maximum we may not get this way. Maximal. Okay. Fine. Why, what is the use of taking that maximum degree? I did not understand. No, you can, we can randomly select any edge. No, ma'am. Why? We consider this case. Huh? Okay. Huh? Fine, if we choose 1, 2, 3, 4. See, I am not taking maximum matching. I am asking you to find maximal matching only. 
maximal uh, that cannot be made any bigger that's all i am not saying it should be of the best cardinality possible i'm not saying that maximal two different maximal can exist two different cardinal ha i showed you an example no that graph that single edge is a maximal matching though it is not a maximum matching ha huh? yes okay so okay now let's come back okay let's come back i think most of you got it right so some people told take any edge to start with now since you have taken this edge none of the endpoints of none of the edges which are incident at the endpoints of this vertices can be taken further so you just ignore i mean delete all of them so take this edge delete all the edges which are incident at the endpoints of other edges which are incident at the endpoints of these two vertices then repeat the same thing in the resultant graph right other edges which you are not going to consider they are not going to be adjacent to the edge which you initially chose right you cho chose one edge initially you have deleted all edges which are incident to both the endpoints of this chosen edge at any stage in the remaining set which you have not taken all the edges will be in independent of any of the edges which you have chosen to include already right now you can repeat the same thing choose any edge from the remaining set add it and delete the edges that are incident or another person told algorithmically just number all the edges e1 to en take e1 into the your set then take e2 and see if that is independent of e1 if it is independent add e1 all e2 also otherwise ignore it at any point you will have a matching with you if the next edge is independent of all the previously added edges you will include it otherwise you will discard it that is also easy right both are actually the same thing told in two different ways so everybody can find a maximal matching very easily in polynomial time right okay so the fact now we are going to combine all these facts to derive an approximation algorithm for vertex cover using these steps okay so <clears throat> but i did not uh, actually prove that a vertex cover cannot be of size uh, i mean a ma what text cover cannot be of size more than 2 times maximum matching i have not yet proven it okay i'll prove it uh, is is that obvious it is right it is obvious because i have got a solution like that so minimum vertex what what we have got now is okay a maximal matching matching in g can be found very easily in polynomial time okay so uh now i also know that okay identified solved these two steps are over right uh this identification of related problem is not yet very I mean we have seen it intuitively i need to complete it we'll do that okay now from a maximal matching m we know how to obtain a minimum a vertex cover of g right now okay from a maximal matching if you take both endpoints of all the 
edges you get a vertex cover but i need to show that this vertex cover is not bad that is it is not too big initially we show so from examples that vertex cover uh, maximum matching is uh, at least half the vert i mean yeah half the vertex cover or vertex cover cannot be more than twice the maximum matching that we saw from examples right uh, what what did we show uh, okay we showed that vertex cover number is less than or equal to 2 times cardinality of m i am not saying mm because mm i initially use for maximum matching right where m is any maximal matching right this we know now but i finally actually i want to show that cover obtained size of vertex cover obtained is equal to 2 times the size of a maximum matching so i know that my minimum vertex cover is of size less than or equal to any vertex cover right the obtained vertex cover is of size 2m exactly 2m so i know that my vertex cover number of g is less than or equal to 2m right but i want to show that the vertex cover that i obtained okay vertex cover let me call it s of g okay the thing that i produce now i am not okay if i say that it is of size at most two times the maximum matching but my original intention was to show that this is somehow related to the size of minimum vertex cover itself not matching right i wanted to find the minimum vertex cover i could not find a minimum vertex cover because that is hard now i found some vertex cover that is related to maximum matching but how do i say that this vertex cover is uh not minimum but at least somewhat close to being a minimum vertex cover so how can we say that <coughs> so if we i can show that this s has cardinality so what i showed is s is of cardinality 2m and vertex cover of g is of size at most 2m right what i want to show is intention is to show that s is less than or equal to need to show right i need to actually not relate this size of s to the size of maximum matching because that is not what i want i want vertex cover right so the size should be compared with the minimum vertex cover number of this graph the ideal thing that exists anyway we don't know how to find it right but there is a number so can i show this that s is of size at most two times vertex cover number of g that is only the missing step if i show that then we got an approximation algorithm for vertex cover and we say that this is a two factor approximation for vertex cover okay if we if we argue the last step also properly s is of size at most two times vertex cover number of g so for what should i know that s is of size 2m so what is what is required 2m is 
less than or equal to 2 Vc. That is what I need to show, right? Okay. See, my intention initially was to find a minimum vertex cover, which is somehow hard only. I don't know how to find it. So then I made a compromise. I told I will find an approximately good, good vertex cover. So it should not, it, it should have size not much larger than the optimum. Optimum is Vc of G. The one that I am trying to find, my intention is to show that it has size not more than twice the optimum. Optimum is Vc of G. What I found, I should show that, I have not shown it, but I should show that it is a size at most two times the optimum value. Fine, that is the fifth step. Are you clear about the other things? Okay, so I need to now complete the fifth step. How? So what is the missing thing? Hmm. Maximal, okay, it is maximal. Maximal match. So, correct. Can you complete it? Do you need an induction at all? Okay, so I have. What we know is S is of size 2 M. Uh, okay. I want to show S is of size less than or equal to 2 V C of G. Right? That is enough to show that that is it is enough to show that 2 M is less than or 2 times cardinality of m is less than or equal to 2 times vc of g or it is enough to show that cardinality of a maximal matching this matching which we have chosen is less than or equal to vertex cover number of g or we need to argue that Vertex cover number of G is at least, just to say in other words, vertex cover number of G has to be at least the size of M. Why is that true? But we need to show that vertex cover number of G is greater than or equal to, it cannot be less than the size of M. <coughs> just see and tell me the proof for that. Why cannot it be? Actually, this is much easier than all the things that we did. Correct. Do you see why? I cannot have a vertex cover of size less than size of M. That is what I need to show. Why? That, uh, okay, you, you need to uh, complete your argument. Why no two ed You need one edge, one vertex to cover that. That is true. One vertex? To co uh, cover that edge. But this, will this vertex cover any other edge? That step also you need to complete in your argument, right? Correct. Yeah, those two together only will make the proof complete. You see it, no? That's uh, in M we are taking independent uh, edges. So uh, at least those many vertices are needed. Yes. Correct. So that many people have got it. That itself. Uh, so see. It need not be even a maximal matching or anything. Take any matching. 
maximum maximal any don't no need to consider any of it let m be any matching right it means it's a set of independent edges okay so it's independent so to cover any edge you need to take one of its endpoints to any cover any edge so these edges are also in your graph right you need to cover these edges also so you have to to cover this edge you need to take either this or this right let's now take at least one of them right will that any end point of this edge will it cover any other edge in the matching no because they are independent right so to cover an edge of the matching you have to pick at least one of its end points right you pick one you are forced to pick right and none of these edges will share an end point right so any picked edge vertex cannot help in covering more than one edge in the matching right so you need to pick at least one end point from all these things to cover even these edges graph may have more edges that we don't know but we need to anyway cover these edges right to cover these edges we need to pick at least one of their end points okay so just to write the arguments fully okay proof to cover an edge any edge e in m we need to take at least one of its end points into any vertex cover minimum in particular minimum vertex cover none of the end points <coughs> of an edge in m can help to cover any other edge of m so you need at least this many even to cover m so graph may have more edges so therefore vc of g is greater than or equal to size of any matching okay so just to now so this need to show part now i showed right need to show part also is shown now i showed that this m is less than or equal to vc of g so this is s is 2m 2m is less than or equal to 2 times vc of g right so what i obtain now to sum up everything okay let me repeat now so we wanted to find minimum vertex cover of the graph of any given graph i told you that okay uh, for trees we can easily find there is a polynomial time method but in general it is np hard so we don't have a way so we thought okay let us from the trees trees we got an intuition that maybe it has some relation to vertex cover right uh, ma maximum matching and i told that actually maximum matching is polynomial time solvable but maximal matching itself is sufficient for us which is very easy to compute so let's relate it with maximal matching and minimum vertex cover so maximal matching is a related problem which is polynomial time solvable and i have actually shown that maximal matching and minimum vertex cover are related in on one side like this right and on the other side okay uh mm 
this is what I showed if m is a maximal matching in G. So, we showed just now that m is less than or equal to Vc of G, cardinality of m is less than or equal to Vc of G. I also showed that earlier itself that Vc of G cannot be more than if you take both endpoints of n then that is sufficient right. So, this is the relation between size of a maximal matching and size of a minimum vertex cover vertex cover number of G. So, this relationship holds. So, there is a two factor relationship between these two parameters and it is easy to find this right. So, this step is so identify a related problem that is maximal matching. So, all the related problem you know how to do it. Now, from the solution of related problem maximal matching you know how to construct a vertex cover right, right you know this. So, now the thing is to argue about how good is the approximation this relationship is sufficient. So, the relation is not some relation, relation is this kind of it is not much more than this if we find this we will get a decent solution for the vertex cover maximum maximal matching is a problem like with that relationship it is not some relationship it has that relationship with vertex cover fine ok. So, uh, we say that the algorithm described is an example of a two factor approximation algorithm it's polynomial time for minimum vertex cover problem for any graph right so any any questions now so okay so, we are now talking about optimization problems. The problem has this problem as stated has only one input which is the graph no k. The associated problem is associated decision problem is n p complete. So, we will say that this problem is also n p complete informally only I told what is an n p complete optimization problem ok, but that is that will serve our purpose ok. First, uh, we will just formalize some of these things which we already saw in, in the case of vertex cover problem. So, I told you that uh, the algorithm which we saw for minimum vertex cover is a two factor approximation algorithm for minimum vertex cover problem. So, what does that mean? It is a polynomial time algorithm also it is a two factor approximation algorithm. So, what does that mean to say that something is a two factor approximation algorithm I want to formalize that, but what is your answer for that? It is not always two times right. Hmm? Uh, see when you are saying some answer right we should say is it like for some instance it is like that or for all instances it is like that we need to have quantifiers right do not just say guaranteed that this I mean that is a partial statement it is not a statement right. So, say the full statement there are many instances of the problem. So, what does it mean to say that a certain algorithm algorithm is for 
not for one instance. It runs on all the instances of the problem, right? And for various instances, it gives different solutions. For some of them, it may be equal to the minimum vertex cover. For some of them, it may be as bad as two times the minimum vertex cover. But what is the guarantee? Hmm? Tell. Instances huh. lies between uh, that quantity to double of that. OK. So that is the right way to say it. So in general, OK, if y is an NP hard, say, uh, there are two types of optimization problems. They can be maximization or minimization problem, right? In case of vertex cover, it's a minimum vertex cover. So if it was an independent set, then it will be maximum independent set because finding a minimum independent set is trivial, right? The difficulty is in finding a maximum independent set. So these problems, NP-hard optimization problems can be either of these types. So this factor of approximation, the definition is uh, similar, symmetric, but slightly different for both these notions. Okay. If pi is an NP hard, say, minimization problem, whatever I write in bracket is for maximization. And A is a polynomial time algorithm for pi, which guarantees that for every instance i, instance, what I mean is like for a vertex cover problem, the instance is a graph for which you want to find the maximum, uh, a minimum vertex cover, right? So the instance can be different. All the graphs are different instances of this problem. So for every instance, that is like for every graph, uh, the solution obtained by A, this algorithm A, uh, has size less than or equal to some f of, say we tell the factor, say, uh, in terms of size of the input, right? In, say, running time of a program, we usually say it's a function of the input size, right? Similarly, this is also we usually say these are functions of the input size. In case of vertex cover, it is very simple. It is a constant. That is also a function, right? It need not be always a constant. Say for some other problems, it can be like if n is the input size, it can be log n. So that is not like a constant, right? We cannot always say it's two factor. It may be sometimes log n factor or even worse than that, OK? So, it is of size less than or equal to f of size of input size, size into opt, opt is the optimum value possible for that input for this problem, OK? Where f is a function from, say, uh, 
z plus natural numbers or whatever natural numbers to say rationals or real whatever okay a computable function is a okay uh, and of i pi denote the optimum value value of pi for input instance i Uh, there here actually this can be uh, this is for minimization so if i want to say for maximization then this has to be greater than or equal to okay and uh, one more condition is there for minimization this function uh, should be greater than or equal to 1 for minimization and it is uh, f on any instance okay Uh, don't be uh, don't worry about this definition you have seen an example already just relate what you have seen with this definition so what do you not know so pi is an np hard minimization problem say take the example of a minimum vertex cover problem it is a np hard minimization problem okay and we have seen a polynomial time algorithm for this problem right which may not give us the optimum value right the algorithm is what take a maximal matching and take both its endpoints that is the algorithm that is the vertex cover it guarantees that for any graph you give for any instance of the problem that you give the output that you get is guaranteed to be of size uh, I should not say size in general has objective function value okay it is not always the size it is a size for vertex cover problem what you the quantity which you want to optimize is the objective function right the number of vertices you want to minimize fine in general it may not be like that it can be any optimized any objective function but simple cases it will be number of vertices or number of edges things like that what you want to uh, optimize objective function value that the algorithm gives is at most say f of i f of i f is only the function constant function 2 in time in the case of vertex cover problem right it is at most two times the optimum value of the problem on this particular graph in general this is the statement so for minimization problems we we will have f of this function will have value greater than or equal to 1 right two times three times that makes sense you cannot say less less than 1 right it has to be a vertex cover so it has to be at least the minimum vertex cover so it will never be less than 1 in case of minimization problem and it will not be greater than 1 for maximization if you are thinking about a click problem or a independent set problem then these things will be whatever is there in the bracket maximization problem then it is at least f of i times this thing 
okay and this factor will be less than 1 so it is like for an independent set if you are saying maximum independent set you can say it will have say you are talking about an approximation algorithm you will say it's a half approximation algorithm if it achieves it is producing an independent set such that for every instance the independent set for that obtained for that instance is of size at least half the size of a minimum um, maximum independent set for the given instance then it's called a half approximation okay simple thing it's not a very complicated thing i just wanted to formally state it okay is it okay if you have any questions please ask just map have a map between this definition and the problem which you have already studied is is it okay f is actually a function from integers it's a function of the input size how many vertices the graph has and things like that that is called the input size so in previous problem for any case it was 2 it's a constant function 2 but for some problem say for example take maximum independent set problem or some other problem it may not be 2 always it may be something else if the graph has n vertices it may be like log n f of n may be log n okay f of n could be root n okay f is not a function of the input but f is a function of the input size when we are talking about order notation also it's not a function of input it's a function of the input size right correct for all graphs of the same size f of i is it's a function okay we need not it's a bound only right so it can be a common function fine that does not mean that for every instance it's as bad as two factor but for any instance for every instance it's guaranteed that it's not going to be worse than two factor or f factor yeah okay f of size of i f of the input size fine any 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 other questions okay so now let me ask you one question so you know that uh vertex today morning you told me you have a reduction from uh click right click you told me there is a polynomial time reduction from click to vertex cover decision problem right so does that also okay i will not ask does that also mean but uh do you have a reduction from okay okay whatever so you know what is the meaning of this if vertex cover has a polynomial time algorithm click also will have a polynomial time algorithm because we have this reduction method which converts the instances of click to vertex cover without changing the answer of the decision problem if the yes if it was a yes instance of click the converted instance reduced instance will be a yes instance of vertex cover if it was a no instance of click the reduced instance will be a no instance of the a no instance of click right the new instance of vertex cover so the answer is preserved it's a polynomial time mapping like this so if at all you know how to solve vertex cover problem in polynomial time decision problem in polynomial time you also get a solution in polynomial time you can give the same answer right whatever you took one instance say i of this you converted it into an instance i dash of vertex cover you know you find the answer for suppose you know how to find i'm not saying you find suppose there exists an algorithm that finds this in polynomial time then the answer for i dash 
you can as well say that it, it will be an answer for I also, right? For the click question, right? So this gives you a solution. If at all, vertex cover was in polynomial time. So that is the relation between these two problems, right? So if vertex cover decision problem can be solved in polynomial time, click decision problem can also be solved in poly time. Okay, we believe both of them are not possible, but still this is the condition, right? Uh, now, uh, okay, so uh, when we talk about decision problems and the optimization version, what is the, rela what is the relation between the two? If you know the answer for this vertex cover uh, decision problem, can you solve uh, the optimization problem? Suppose you knew the answer, I mean a method, good method to solve the decision problem of vertex cover. Does that give you a method to solve the optimization version? How? Uh, for every k, you can run it and get it, right? So that is one way. Or if you know uh, minim the optimization problem's answer, does that give you a solution for the decision version? That also, right? You find the minimum possible. If k is less than that, it is not possible for minimum vertex score. If k is more than that, it is possible right okay so uh, that's the relation between these two uh, so i can actually if you look at the reduction you can also see that can i say this if minimum vertex cover optimization problem can be exactly precisely in polynomial time <coughs> click max click optimization problem can also be solved in polynomial time. Does that, is that true? If you know how to, you do not know, forget about that. Suppose you know how to compute minimum vertex cover of a graph in polynomial time, exactly in polynomial time deterministically. Then do you get a solution for max click problem also in polynomial time? How? same reduction right the whatever is the uh, set form right the same method gives you answer is yes this is a statement that that holds but now the what we know is it this is unlikely right that there is a solution possible for minimum vertex cover Exact to solve it exactly in polynomial time. Now the question is, suppose we have, actually we have, we do not need to suppose because we have showed it, we have a two-factor approximation algorithm for vertex cover, right, optimization problem. Okay, my question now is, does that give you a two-factor 
approximation algorithm or half factor approximation algorithm for maximum i mean max click or maximum independent set whatever i mean all these uh, reductions exist right from independent set also you can reduce to vertex cover hmm? so independent set also will reduce to vertex cover right this is easier for me to uh, we have this thing then does that imply imply that we have a half factor for say maximum independent set optimization just think about it so if we have to say that yeah think about it i know to approximately solve vertex cover not exactly we have seen al algorithm right mm. to solve vertex cover approximately does that mean that for the independent set also what is independent set whatever is vertex cover the remaining is in an independent set so when this is minimized the other will be maximized okay right isn't it so is it true that we get a half factor approximation or why why don't we get immediately function may change but uh, what function can we guarantee can we get a half hmm? f inverse uh, doesn't make much sense right because it's a function from integers to something inverse doesn't make sense this is, should be some other function from integers to reals or rationals huh it should be possible because if we take the complement of that graph ah uh -huh. see in the same i mean maximum independent set and minimum vertex cover the relationship is there in the same graph yeah. if you have one set as vertex cover uh -huh. the remaining vertices form an independent yeah. set that is the relation not the complement complement relation is between click and vertex i mean independent set isn't it because is is that is that uh, you, do you need a proof for that you need a proof for that but can you sh show it if s is a set of vertices in a graph g which forms a vertex cover then v of g minus s is an independent set in g it is clear right because all edges are incident on this so in the remaining set there are no edges correct vice versa so this is an if and only if statement s is an independent set in g if and only if s complement is a vertex cover in g and when one is maximum the other is minimum okay so what do you say Of n minus k and n minus 2k. So, 
this happens to be like sorry the inverse n minus k by n minus 2 two. this happens to be 1 plus k by n minus k and now to show that this is bounded by 1 so this is showing this to be bounded by 1 would imply 2 k is uh, this is less than 1 so showing that this would be n is greater than 2 times k the number of vertices in the graph so what is your intuition is it true or false Hmm. Any other answer? Want you to think. <laughs> Just uh, complete, try to complete your argument. Actually, it is uh, it is the other way. Can you now prove that <laughs> it, it's not possible like this? You can. Uh, yeah, there is some problem probably in your reasoning. Okay, so uh, since none of you are giving a solution, I'll give you an answer. So this does not imply at all. Because that is why maybe you are not getting a proof, okay? So, okay. So, let's see a counter example then, okay? <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, it's a manipulation only, right? So, if we have, say, suppose you are given a graph whose vertex cover number is greater than n by 2. There are many such graphs, right? Say, a click is an example where it is n minus 1. So, there are many examples where vertex cover number will be greater than n by 2 greater than or equal to n by 2. So, what is guaranteed by our approximation algorithm for vertex cover problem? If you are given a graph whose vertex cover number is known to be greater than or equal to n by 2, your approximation algorithm A, it can go as bad as 2 factor, right? So, it will not give you anything better than n. It may not, right? So, in the worst case, it may tell you take the entire set of vertices and it is a vertex cover, right? Correct. So, what is the, suppose you get that solution for vertex cover, entire vertex set, okay? So, what solution can you derive for the independent set from this? The complement of that, which is the empty set, which is an independent set in the given graph, but it may be much smaller, this is a zero sized independent set. It is likely that you have an independent set in your graph of size n by 2, right? And you are getting zero, you cannot bound it at all, right? Okay. So, uh, do you get the argument? Suppose, answer is no, okay? This is not a foolproof argument, but take the family of all graphs for which vertex cover is number is at least say n by 2, okay? So, even for this graph class, even for this graph class, this is not all graphs, right? Some graphs uh, have very small in, uh, vertex covers. This is not all graphs. Even for these graphs, vertex cover problem remains NP complete. Fine? Okay? 
even for such graphs suppose we run our algorithm such a graph the algorithm only guarantees that it will give us a vertex cover of size less than or equal mean less than or equal to n right because we have vertex cover already size greater than or equal to n by 2 whatever is the size double, double of that that is what is guaranteed right I mean it may give better but in the worst case it may give as bad as n right the the algorithm only guarantees a vertex cover of size n for these graphs right to find guarantees to find there may be smaller vertex covers but it guarantees to find only vertex covers of size n that means all vertices so from this how will you construct a independent set for the same graph if you want to the using the reduction that's the reduction right remaining vertices will give you an independent set for the same graph remaining is nothing zero right i'm not completing the entire thing so remaining is a zero so for the same graph using the reduction <coughs> from to vertex cover we only get a null set as independent set in the original graph but the graph may have an n by 2 sized independent set so the solution that we got is very bad compared to the optimum optimum may be n by 2 if it is a half factor we should have got at least n by 4 but we got zero right it's very bad okay so what i wanted to convey is that fine if, if you did not understand please ask hmm? can you again explain see what i am telling is if you want to say that i got a i know how to get a uh, using this reduction if you wanted to get a approximation algorithm for uh, independent set then what will the approximation algorithm be get the approximate solution of vertex cover pull back that exact exact solution you pulled back no you pull it back and get the exact solution for independent set similarly but now you only know how to find an approximate solution for vertex cover if you pull it back you are not getting an approximate solution for independent set you are getting a very bad thing because using this reduction you may have started with a graph whose independent set size is n by 2 okay maybe very close to n by 2 n by 2 or very close to n by 2 now when you convert it this is the reduction right you started with a graph independent set sizes say n by 2 or very close to n by 2 okay then you converted it you got a, 
I mean it is actually the same graph whose vertex cover size is also like uh, slight say slightly less than n by 2 say this is say n by 4 vertex cover size is say I mean independent set size is n by 4. So, you got the same graph has a vertex cover size say 3 n by 4 right that is the conversion the same graph only you are that reduction is quite straightforward right. Now, that is actually the property of the graph these are the optimum values. But if this is the minimum vertex cover number of the resultant graph our algorithm when we run on it it is only an approximation algorithm it guaranteed only that it can give us a two factor approximation not exact solution. So, it will give you something which is between 3 n by 4 and 2 times 3 n by 4. But 2 times 3 n by 4 is already greater than n right <coughs> 6 times right 3 n by 4 right. So, what it gives us is guaranteed only to be n right the al approximation algorithm when you run for vertex cover it will give you as maybe in the worst case it may it is guaranteed to give you only a solution of size n right for A gives <coughs> vertex cover of size less than or equal to say 6 n by 4, but this does not make sense or we can say of size n right. It is guaranteed to give only that 6 n by 4 is greater than n why should it how can it give more than n. So, it will it is guaranteed to give you something like n only. Now, from this solution how will you get a solution for independent set in the original graph take its complement right complement of this set this is the entire set of vertices that is forming a vertex cover that is the answer that the algorithm is giving you. Now, that when you translate to the original independent set problem you get a null set as the independent set that is an independent set. Huh? But I originally started with this graph which has an independent set which is very big like n by 4 right. Now, I got a 0 sized independent set there is no 2 factor between these 2 right I should at least get n by 8, n by 8. I, I cannot get. The maximum independent set will become the minimum vertex cover in the 2G complement. Same graph no. Complement, uh, what do we get? What do we get? You try. You uh, sure. actually the reduction is not like that then I need not argue about such a reduction there is no reduction like that ok. Hmm? What is your reduction you try to complete it that is not true. Maybe you saw uh, something which is like directly from click to vertex cover which is like that in the complement and all that ok ok ok. So, the conclusion that I want to derive is that, so when we have this theory of NP completeness uh, pol with respect to polynomial time solvability all the NP complete problems are the same in the sense if you solve one NP complete problem in polynomial time you can find polynomial time solution for all NP, NP complete problems right. However, even if you know how to approximately find a solution for one NP complete problem you need not that does not mean you will immediately get a, a similar factor I mean or reverse I mean 1 by 2 a approximation algorithm for uh, other NP complete problems. In fact, this though minimum vertex cover problem is two factor approximable 
we will probably see several such approximation and methods of approximating minimum vertex curve with the same two factor. This independent set problem with respect to approximability is known to be very hard. Okay. There is not even a root n factor approximation algorithm known or is not expected also for maximum independent set problem. Not even a root n, 1 by root n. I mean, when I say it's a maximizer, even 1 by root n you cannot approximate. Okay. So, with with respect to approximability, these pro two problems are entirely different. One is two factor is like something which is very good, right? Assuming it cannot be solved, two factor is good. But then root n factor is something which is already bad, even that is not possible. Even it is not even root n, anything better than n to the 1 minus epsilon is not possible. No n to the 1 minus epsilon factor is possible with some assumptions unless say like p equal to np, that kind of some other assumptions. Okay, so with respect to approximability, these problems are very different. So, you cannot stop by learning or trying to get approximation algorithm for one problem. For approaching another problem, you may need a different approach. You cannot just use the Cook reduction and get approximation algorithm for one problem from another immediately. Right? No, so for some it is not possible also, but for some problems it is possible. Say click and vertex cover, uh, click and independent set if you see, what was the, what was the relation between the two? Did you see, did you do that reduction? Click and, Uh, click reduces to independent set the other way also okay <coughs> both reduce to each other so what was the reduction this actually it is the complement right that is where the complement comes okay whatever forms I click in the graph uh, between them there is there are all edges in the complement there is no edge between them that becomes an independent set that is the relation between these two right so for this one, actually, whatever you find here, the same factor you will get here also. But that is coincidental. Okay. For that reduction, it happens. That is, we will maybe if time permits, we will see that it's a special type of approximation. It's called a approximation factor preserving reduction. That kind of reductions we need. Okay. We need stronger properties for the reduction, not only just cook reduction. Okay, for getting that. So, this reduction is something more special. It even preserves approximate instances of one to map approximate instance of one to approximate instance of the other. <coughs> that is not the case for this initial in independent set to vertex cover kind of reduction. Approximate solutions are not mapped. Okay. So, that is the only theory which I wanted to say. Now, maybe we will solve rest of the problems in the uh, sheet. Okay, so uh, just one more small thing. So, for vertex cover, when we solved it, we told that uh, if M is a maximal matching, then size of M is less than or equal to the vertex cover number of G, which is less than or equal to two times cardinality of m, right? This is the relation which we used. So, after we got our solution, we wanted a lower bound, right? This, this is the size that we got for our vertex cover, right? By taking both the endpoints of all vertices in the matching. 
after we got this solution, we also needed this lower bound relation to say that our solution is less than or equal to, now I can say this is because this is this relation holds, this is less than or equal to 2 times Vc of g, right? And our solution is guaranteed to be of size less than or equal to 2m, right? Solution S is of size less than or equal to 2m, which is of size less than or equal to 2 Vc of g. This we concluded only by knowing this relation also, right? A lower bound for the optimum, right? So, having a lower bound, uh, good, <coughs> lower bound for optimum is a good way to argue the approximation factor. of the algorithm. Okay, the guaranteed approximation factor to argue that to complete the argument we would need one lower bound, some guarantee on uh, some lower bound relation that we will use for showing that this is bounded by 2 times the optimum, right. Our solution is bounded by 2 times the size of the optimum. 